this Caribbean beat and we want you to join us to praise the Lord so put on your dancing shoes and we want to say to the Lord today glory glory hallelujah God almighty you are faithful to the end glory glory hallelujah God almighty you are faithful say it again glory glory hallelujah God almighty
this Caribbean beat and we want you to join us to praise the Lord so put on your dancing shoes good evening and welcome to the Tuesday night victory service how are you doing uh, it's pastor Christian Temo right here coming to you uh, coming to you you know in this space I wanted to say coming to you live from but um, I'm in the space that it is not permitted for man to reveal. So coming to you in this space and uh, glad that you are tuned in again. I uh, hope that you began your week well, you're beginning it well. I hope that um, you were farming up your steps even as we get into the mid, or rather we are in the mid of uh, September already. Can you believe it? It's already the 15th of September. We are in the middle of the month. God is great, God is gracious to us and kind. Uh, well, those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, we are glad to have you and we hope that you will receive nourishment for your soul, food for your spirit, and you will have strength and vitality from the Word of God and hope that you will become part of our online church. Glory be to Jesus Christ. We've got the Tuesday night victory service. 6 p.m. East African time and every Thursday as well we do the Thursday night school of faith 6 p.m. East African time as well which is GMT plus 3 then every Sundays we've got uh, two services the New Birth Covenant Church in Siokimau which is at 8.30 a.m. for the first service and 11 a.m. for the second service uh, we've got morning mist which is a time of prayer and the word every morning 6 to 7 a.m. Monday to Friday um, and, and we just would like you to join us in as well in those sessions online again. So in the comfort of your home, when you just get into the office, um, if you just want to have your morning devotion and you have probably woken up at 5 and you have prayed or 5.30, then you have prayed, then you tune in. Uh, so you need to subscribe to the Covenant channel on YouTube and follow the Covenant channel as well, as well as just following the other pages of New Birth Covenant Church that we have. We're excited because Sunday, this past Sunday, we commissioned New Birth Covenant Church, Kitengela. Amazing, amazing. God is so faithful and God is so gracious. I've been talking about the unbroken promises of God um, slash the faithfulness of God. But I mean, God is so faithful. Even in this particular season, uh, God just keeps on showing us that he is not a man to lie. He's not a son of man to change his mind. When we began this year, we started with the word, it's uh, gratitude and growth. 
and God is still growing us in various ways in diverse manners even in the toughest of times God is growing us and sometimes growth is not something that is physical and external visible or tangible but sometimes the growth is happening internally so scripture would say that even though the outward man is perishing the inward man is being renewed day by day I know a lot of us have grown in so many ways in faith, in understanding, in stability. We have grown in mentality in this season and this year. We have grown in stewardship. We have learned what to do and what not to do. So in every aspect, God has been uh, faithful to his word to us. But we're so excited to welcome the New Birth Covenant Church, Kitengela uh, baby to the family, to the great family of New Birth Covenant Church. So please check them out on Facebook as well. If you live around Kitengela, please make that your home church. The church is located uh, off Namanga Road that is along Balozi Road and next to Balozi Heights you will see a white tent over there. It's just about five minutes walk from the main road, Namanga Road, uh, along Balozi Road and you will see the Balozi Road or Balozi Avenue but you will see New Birth Covenant Church Kitengela right there. So we thank God for that of course. Then we have many others as well. So check out on Facebook and you will see New Birth Covenant Church Rongai, New Birth Covenant Church City Center. You will see New Birth Covenant Church Free Area Nakuru. If you're in Nakuru, please plug in and just get there. You will see New Birth Covenant Church Meru, uh, New Birth Covenant Church Nyahururu. You will see Eldoret, you will see Kisumu. Whichever way, whichever place, uh, please plug in and be part of this family and we are uh, delighted to have you glory be to god where are you watching from and where are you are you here already please let me know that you are here let me know send uh, a wave this is where we do the wave offering you know it's back from the days of the old testament so we have the wave offering so please uh, give your wave offering right over there let me know that you are tuned in and uh, where you're tuned in from and please tag somebody and if you can share the stream host a watch party and let's have a holy ghost party glory be to god well today i remembered that i have written books and uh, it's not going to be fair for me to keep on talking to you and not pushing you to the place where you need to read i have authored eight books um, and we were looking forward to just bringing out some more this year but before we get those i want you to get a copy of this particular books there is this book that is called Understanding Prophetic Dimensions. Uh, Understanding Prophetic Dimensions. There's a lot that is going on in the body of Christ and in our lives. And sometimes we want to know, so what exactly did God say? Whom is God using? What is God saying? Um, how do I know that the word is true? How do I even know how to hear God? And if you're operating in the gifts of the Spirit and you want to operate in the gift of prophecy, how do you even manifest that this book will be of great help to you it is a book for everyone it is a group a book for everyone there's some people who do not think that you know they align to the prophetic some people are critics of the prophetic but you cannot criticize something before you understand it it's important for you to have some knowledge so that if you will offer constructive criticism your criticism will be based on knowledge then there are those who uh, appreciate and love the prophetic but they also do not have knowledge so they try to turn prophets into magicians and they try to turn prophets into sorcerers you know so it is also important for you each and every believer needs to have this book you need to have this book and i am going to just put that on offer for you uh, right now uh, that you will get this book at only 500 shillings and this offer will only last in this uh, season of S september um, i feel like giving you a gift friday is my birthday so this is my gift to all of you um, you need to get this book understanding prophetic dimensions you just need to call or text uh, plus two five four seven one three five nine six five five two seven one three five nine six five five two and you can get yourself a copy of understanding prophetic dimensions glory be to god uh, so i'm looking forward to hearing from you as you get this book at only 500 shillings and i'm uh, in fact, you know, uh, you would just decide and say, man of God, how many books are there? There are a thousand. Okay, bring all of them. I pay and let's clear this stuff. Let me give it to other people. Glory be to God. There is one of my favorite books. 
that I wrote a few years ago, one of my favorite books, and it is called Walk Your Grace. My goodness, I cannot even begin to tell you about this book. I cannot begin to tell you about this book. But a lot of people would ask me, how do you do the number of things that you do? You're doing uh, a few things here and there. Uh, and by the grace of God, I have been enabled to do quite a number of things as well and still growing the mandate keeps on growing and the secret of everything that i do is in this book and this is whack your grace to each one of us there is grace given according to the measure of the gift of christ what do you do with that and esau and jacob form the storyline of this book and then we glean from the lessons that are in their lives jacob had the blessing he had a prophecy he had a promise over his life even before he was born esau was the one that the scripture would say esau was hated even before he was born in romans chapter 11 uh, the scripture talks about that it's not hated that god had hatred but it is just that he preferred jacob and so god said before even the children were born paul says that that god said Esau have I hated, Jacob have I loved, which means he preferred Jacob. So my question then would be, uh, when you see the dealings of these brothers, my questions would be, what is it that Esau knew and did that caused him at Genesis 33 to get to the place where he was such a blessed man that he no longer had pain, he no longer was angry with his brother, uh, he initially nearly did what Cain did to Abel. He wanted to kill his brother. His brother had to run away. But later on when they meet in Genesis chapter 33, he has no bitterness. He has no anger. He has no pain. He is satisfied. And even when Jacob wanted to give him some offering and some gift, he said, no, I am, I am all right. I have enough. What is it that made this man move from the place of pain and push him into passion and purpose? What are the things that Esau knew that even though he did not have the birthright because he lost it, he did not have the blessing because he lost it, he didn't have the prophecy or the promise, he went out and worked and eventually Jacob comes and calls Esau my Lord. Remember it is Esau that was supposed to serve Jacob. But what is it that Esau did that even with everything against him, he still went out and succeeded? I talk about that in Work Your Grace. And ladies and gentlemen, actually both books are on offer only for this week, not even September, only for this week. I will not be fair to try and keep them on offer the whole time. Between now and Sunday, you can get each of these books at 500 shillings. This will turn your life around. It will blow your mind completely. Work your grace and uh, understanding prophetic dimension. So with only a thousand shillings, ladies and gentlemen, you can get yourself two books that will carry you through this season and you will be a better, better, better person. Glory be to God. Amen and amen. Are you ready for the word of the Lord? Glory be to God. Are you ready for the word of the Lord? Heavenly Father, we thank you for an opportunity to just draw and glean from your spirit and your word. We thank you because your word is truth. Your word is life. Your word is light. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword and your word is able to separate the bone from the marrow. We thank you because your word saves and heals, sets free and delivers. We thank you because the entrance of your word brings light and causes the simple to understand. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. By your word, O oh God, we receive counsel. By your word, we receive insight. By your word, we receive strength and salvation and vitality. So tonight I pray, rebuke every divine devourer for our sake in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is trying to eat up on our faith, anything that is trying to eat up on our joy, our service and love for the Lord, I pray they rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Let the angelic host fight battles for people who are weak. I pray right now, cancel the sentence of death. Cancel the sentences of death in the name of Jesus Christ. Paralyze every operation of the devil in the atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus. Cut loose every chain that Satan has on your people and their minds. Tonight I pray, even as we bring the word that let every shackle fall off, I pray that the scales of the eyes will fall off so that they'll be able to see the wonders of your law in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen hallelujah glory be to god 
Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. And then we will get to 2 Peter chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Glory be to God. The scripture says to us in Hebrews chapter 6 and from verse 9, actually, from verse 9, is it verse 9? The scripture says, But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though with us speak. For God is not unrighteous. God is not unrighteous. This is why God cannot break his promises. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you does show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope to the end, that you be not slothful, that you do not be slothful, but followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured hmm. he obtained a promise for men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife therefore god willing more abundantly to show to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath scripture says men usually swear by the greater that means if you want a guarantee then you have to make a greater person become the guarantee a higher person, an older person, a respected person, an elevated person becomes the guarantee because you must have more than you guarantee. You must have more than you guarantee. So the greater must be the guarantor. And he says, men swear verily by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them the end of all strife. That when people take an oath, then that word is supposed to be as good as done. So the oath is the surety of the promise. That's what the scripture says. That an oath is to them the end of all strife. If people disagreed, if people wanted to know what are we going to do about this, then you bring them together. And that was more in the Jewish tradition as well. You bring them together and they swear an oath. They take an oath and they say, I will do this. Now, when you take an oath, there are consequences to that oath. So the oath then would be the end of all dispute because what somebody has sworn as an oath becomes binding to them. So scripture says, God willing more abundantly to demonstrate to the heirs of promise that his word does not change. He confirmed it by an oath. I mean, God is not under obligation to give an oath. God is good by himself. God's word is good by itself. I mean, God has no one greater for him to swear by. When he gave the promise to Abraham, he could not swear by anyone because there was nobody greater. So God swore by himself. But to even go farther, he did not just swear or promise by himself. He went farther just for the people to get to know that he was committed to this word. He did what he should not have done as God. He gave an oath just so that the human mind, the, the, the fragile human mind would comprehend the intensity of the commitment of God to his promise. So he was using things that are things that are relatable to man to demonstrate his commitment. The truth, ladies and gentlemen, is that God doesn't need to commit to anything because God cannot go against anything that he has said. But he wanted us to know. He wanted the heirs of promise to know that he would fulfill his words. So he went farther, apart from giving the promise, that he gave an oath. And he said, surely, in blessing, I will bless you. Surely, when God says surely, I mean, God himself is sure. But when God says surely, then it means he will do absolutely anything and everything to cause that word to come to pass. 
it means that he can raise dead things and it means that he can open up locked spaces and it means that he can just turn around time it means that he can orchestrate weather patterns it means that he can maneuver how people meet and whom you meet and where you meet it means that he can disrupt the sleep of a king in the night and drive them to read the books of remembrance it means that he can give a dream to a king with the king cannot interpret and then he shuts the minds of the magicians and the astrologers so that they cannot comprehend that meaning it means that he can cause a king to dream and cause somebody to remember that you were in the prison cell and you are an interpreter of dreams it means that he can cause you to walk to the well at lunchtime and find a jew sitting by that well it means that he can send you into a space and when you say that let the woman who comes in fast to the well be the wife for my master's son and you will find his woman who is willing to come and water the camels it means that he can cause anything to happen and he can come after you through the burning bush that will never be consumed he can just do anything god gives his promise which is sure enough but when god says surely when God says surely, my good God, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. When God says surely, <laughs> oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, I'm sitting down here, man. This I should have been preaching this in the life service. But when God says surely, my good God, I mean, when when surety, when surety says surely then there is no demon in hell there is no power on the earth there is no human being there's no level of resource there's no amount of incantation there's no depth of witchcraft there is no strength of a spell that can hinder what he has said there is not even a mount of oh god i'm gonna say this and you're gonna hear it in your spirit there's not even the amount of mistakes you can make to negate the surely of God. Oh Lord have mercy. You can be as wrong as two left shoes. But if God says surely. If God says surely. You could be as dead as Lazarus. Four days in the grave. But if God said surely. You could be at 90 years old Sarah. You could be at 90 years old. But if God says surely. If God says, I feel excited, I'm going to jump out of my seat over here. If God says, surely, if God says, surely, that word will threaten hell. That word will shake gates. That word will cause foundations to be broken and reset. That word alone sends witches back. I mean, when God says, surely, the enemy is afraid of when God gives his word over any situation because there is no nothing that can be done against the truth there is nothing that can win against the word of god there's absolutely nothing that can withstand god's word he upholds everything by the word of his power that's what hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 says to us that he upholds everything by the word of his power if the heavens and the earth were created by the word if everything is sustained and held in place by the word if everything was created was put in place and is organized held together by the word of god and yet in genesis 1 god did not even use the word surely he just said let there be light if let there be light could cause light what would surely oof, my good god <laughs> What would surely do? God would use the oath to remove the doubts. God would use the oath to remove the doubts. God would use the oath to remove the doubts. He just wants you to know that I have a grip of this. So if he says, surely you shall leave. If you don't hear anything else, you just have to hear the part of God where he says, surely. If he says, surely you shall leave. Surely in blessing, I will bless you. I know for some of us it feels like it's really stretched out and it's really been going on for long and it really has taken too long that if God said surely in blessing I will bless you then ladies and gentlemen time gets suspended by the oath 
time and every natural factor gets suspended by the promise of God and by the oath of God. The promises of God are not only yes and amen, they are totally timeless. They are eternal in nature. They are supernatural in organization. And so when they come, when God makes his promises to you, the promise begins to reorganize time and circumstances and people and spaces. The promise of God begins to reshape the thinking of people and open up spaces for you. The promise of God begins to rearrange the calendar so that where you were called old and barren, where you are called dead of the womb, the promise of God begins to reorganize that. The promise of God begins to reawaken cells and bring life into a womb that was dead. The promise of God begins to rearrange the chemical composition of a, of a womb, old woman's body because everything then has got to align to the word of God. You must understand that everything that was created was created for God. The word of God is God and God is his word. So everything must serve the purpose of God. When God gives his word, he has given himself and things must serve that purpose. God is superior to time, to space, to situations and everything else. That's why Jesus would say, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. He said the Sabbath was not made for man. Uh, rather, the Sabbath, man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. That means that when Jesus came into the earth, Sabbath needed to rearrange itself. Sabbath needed to serve the purpose of Jesus. It was not Jesus coming to serve the Sabbath. It is the Sabbath serving the purpose of Jesus. So Sabbath was an opportunity for Jesus to heal the sick, deliver the bound, set them free. In the same manner, when that word gets into your life, everything about your life serves the purpose of that word. Glory be to Jesus Christ. We are persuaded. <laughs> of better things concerning you. I tell you the truth. I know you have gone through tough times, but I'm persuaded that there is absolutely no way God would have kept you all through this season, brought you this far if he didn't have greater plans. I am persuaded that God did not hold you up in the high water, in hell, in fire. God did not hold you up in the wilderness. God did not hold you up against all attacks and every malice and every vitriol that everybody would send you away. God did not hold you up against your own insecurities and fears and doubts and anxiety and panic. God didn't hold you up against all sickness and manner of disease if he did not have better for you because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and even though he fall glory be to God the scripture says he upholds him the Lord delights in his way and even though he falls he upholds him and he says once I was young now I am old I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his children beg for bread the path of the just man is like the shining light that shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day so we have this sure word of prophecy which we do well to take heed of as light in a dark place until the breaking of the dawn till the day still arises god has never taken us lower than where we were before if he allows you to go lower he allows you to go lower so that he can bring you up greater because except the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies it abides alone it multiplies itself so there's no way you survived everything if God did not have greater for you, there is no way you survived everything. There is no way he has kept you this far if he did not have greater. We are persuaded of greater things concerning you. To many people, it is easy to receive a general word. To many people, it is easy to get excited about something that is thrown into the atmosphere. But then the writer of Hebrew says, we are persuaded of greater days, better things concerning you. Ladies and gentlemen, personalize the promise. I don't know why we generalize the promise, but we personalize the problem. I don't know why we generalize the promise, but we personalize the problem. We are supposed to do it the other way. Personalize the promise. 
generalize the problem because even scripture will teach you that there is no temptation that has come upon man but such as is common the problem should be generalized the promise must be personalized there's no day god was talking to people as if they were impersonal he would bring his promises directly to the people when god made a promise to abraham do you see that that is so personal that when god made a promise to abraham because he could swear by no one else he swore by himself do you realize it is so personal when god made a promise to you he meant it you are qualified for everything that god said you are qualified not by your own might not by your own strength not even because of your gift not because you pray more than everybody else prays and don't you even take pleasure in the fact that you think you please god more than everybody else no god qualifies you by his own grace God qualifies you by his own grace. There is none of us that would be deserving of anything that God gives to us in our own way. The scripture says that the righteousness of man is as filthy rags. So you could be as clean as the Pharisees and still not qualify for the salvation of God. You could be like, you could say, I pray for five hours. I study the word every day. I pay my tithe and time. I am the one who does one, two, three. You could do all of that, but none of that qualifies you. We are absolutely dependent on the grace of God that's what qualifies us does it mean that because of that grace then we are irresponsible no but I'm just trying to say that we must remain cognizant of the fact that you qualify for the promises of God not based on your strength the reason is this if you think that you qualify based on your strength the day you are weak the enemy will rob you of the faith for the promise when you think it is your strength that is keeping you in that place of the promise and the day you are weak the enemy will rob you of the strength for that promise or the faith for that promise the day you do not pray as long as you pray you will feel God has changed his mind the day you feel I'm no longer I've not been typing you will feel God has changed his mind on the promise the day you feel oh my god I woke up at six I should have been waking up at four God is very upset with me and God is not happy because I let God down the day you start thinking like that then you will move yourself away from the place of faith I'm not talking about as being uh, I'm not talking about as being careless and being uh, arrogant in any way as well I'm not talking about as just being people who do not care no I'm saying that you must understand that when God gave a promise to you he totally depended on his ability and he did it on the foundation of his grace towards you hallelujah so when he says to Abraham I will bless you Whew. I will surely bless you. He says that and confirms it with the north so that we, the heirs of promise, must understand that the counsel of God is immutable. The counsel of God is immutable. God wanted all argument to end at that particular point. I want to read a portion of scripture which, uh, if I don't read, I will not have done well, because this becomes the entry to our Thursday night school of faith. Psalm on Second Peter chapter 3. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Second Peter chapter 3. I will read a bit Ooh, from verse 1. This second episode, beloved, I now write to you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you be mindful of the words which were spoken before. I need you to look at that, and then I need you to look at verse 12 of Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, the scripture says that you do not be slothful, but followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Say, do not be slothful. God is not un unrighteous. God is not unjust. But do not be slothful. Now, in verse 2 of 2 Peter chapter 3, he says that you be mindful of the words which were spoken. Have the consciousness, the awareness of whatever was spoken over you. The prophecies, the promise that God gave you. He says, be mindful of that. And in Hebrews 6, 12, he says, do not be slothful. So this mindfulness of what God said, this being conscious of what God said, is supposed to move you into a place of activity. 
the activity of faith, the diligence of faith. It's supposed to bring you to the place where you are diligent based on what God said. God said he will do this for you. And if you have that in mind every time, you will consciously pursue and you will constantly be in the pursuit of what God has said to you. So it means there's a way it drives you to think. There's a way it drives you uh, to live. There's a way it drives you to manage your life, your time, your uh, energy. There's a way it drives you to manage even your friendships, your relationships, there's a way it drives you. Why? Because you are mindful of the things which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles and the, of the Lord and Savior. If you are mindful of the promises that were made to you, if you are conscious of what you are carrying and the destiny that you're carrying, if you're conscious of the fact that there is a greater ahead of you, then you cannot be slothful because you are not going to sit home, fold your hands and say, God said it, I believe it, and that's just it. No, that's not how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Do not even simplify what some of the great men and women of God in faith have done before. Uh, you will hear some of them say, God said it, and I believe it, and that settles it. But I'll tell you the truth, before they come to the, that settles it, they have worked it. So you cannot be lying down on your couch and saying, oh, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. And you're lying down on your couch, flipping through the channels on TV and chatting the whole time. If God said it and you think you believe it, then go out and work it. Then that will settle it. Whew. If God said it, if you really believe it, then go out and work it. If you believe that God said it, you're going to be this great person. You have begin, you have got to begin to prepare yourself for that kind of greatness. If you believe that God said you need to go to the nations as a missionary, you're going to have to learn certain things. You're going to have to prepare yourself in a certain way. If you believe that God has called you to be a communicator, you're going to be studying how to communicate. You're going to be improving on how to communicate. There's some things you will not receive by faith. There's certain things that you are going to receive by practice, not by faith. There's nobody who wakes up today and then by faith knows how to drive. You go to driving school, it does not mean that you're not a spiritual person. There's certain things that we do which are absolutely foolishness and carelessness. You don't just wake up and then you have, you know, you just woke up and today, oh my God, I was size 54 and now I am size 8. You don't just wake up stuff like that. You are going to have to have some discipline. You're going to have to to put in some work. You will watch what you eat. You will watch when you eat. You will watch how you eat. You will exercise a bit more. You see, sometimes the slothfulness that we carry in the body of Christ has led many people into spiritual death and even into emotional death because eventually they are in church, but they are dead emotionally and spiritually. They do not participate. They have no joy of the Lord. They think that the Lord has not kept his promise. Yet the truth is, you were not mindful of the promises and you became slothful. You became slothful. So you blame God. You blame God for not doing his part. And you think you had no part in this. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 3, so I keep on reading verse 3. Knowing this fast that there shall first come in the last day's coffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Woof! Where is the promise of his coming? The scripture says there will be scoffers. There will be people who will be doubting the promise. Many people fail here. When your family members, and those are usually the fast ones, <laughs> when they begin to ask, about this your salvation and this thing you always in church and you always oh you take your money to church in the name of tithe you're just making the pastors rich or you're spending all the time in church that's why now you're not married can't you just go out over there and be available and make people get to meet you and stuff i mean what kind of nonsense is that how much time do people spend in church people will spend about two hours or something on a sunday but in the midweek probably an hour even if it is two hours i mean how many hours are there in a day? 24 hours. You want to blame two hours for somebody remaining single. What kind of demon is that that is working in your head? 22 hours. So now we will blame two hours for this person being single. They meet all kinds of people in the bank, in the supermarket, in the matatu. They walk on the street. They meet all these kind of people. Nobody has ever talked to them. Now we're going to blame them being in church for two hours for them not being married or something. What kind of careless demon is that? Glory be to God. 
There will be scoffers. Hmm. Walking after their own lives. There will be scoffers. They'll be saying, where is the promise of his coming? Because from those days, since the father slept, all things continue as they were. Lord, I wish I had a real mic. <laughs> they say everything is just going on the same way. So where is this promise you talk about? Where is this thing you were shouting about in January? Where is that thing that you were excited about in March? Because it seems like everything is just going on the way it was. Verse 5, for this they willingly are ignorant of. Whew. They are willingly ignorant of this. That by the word of God, the heavens were made. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. They are ignorant of the fact that everything was created by the word of God. And the earth came out of water. And stush. The earth came out of water that I have never understood. Dry land appeared out of water. I've never understood. I don't know how you come out of the water dry. I don't know how you come out of a swimming pool dry. I don't know how you come out of a bathtub dry. But this they're ignorant of, that the earth came out of the water and stood in the water. The earth stood out of the water and in the water. Whew. And he says, whereby the world that then was, was overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which now are, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved to fire against the day of judgment and perdition of godly men. Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years, a thousand as one day. This is where I was coming to, and we pick it up on, on uh, Thursday. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise <laughs> oh my god tell the devil i'm not too old tell the devil is not too late tell every lying spirit silence every voice that is trying to discourage you tell them it's not been too long because the lord is not slack concerning his promise when god says surely when God says surely, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. God is not slack. God is not slack. He's not slow. He's not lazy. He's not weak concerning his promise the way men count slackness. So when men count it as a delay, it's not a delay with God. When man says it is slow, it is not slow with God. When men say it is not working, it's not, that's not the same interpretation because they speak different languages. It means something different in heaven as it does on the earth. And unless you're a faith person, you will never understand the language of God. So do not be paying attention. Do not pay attention to people who don't speak the language of God and use their language, the interpretation, definitions, and the meanings of their word, which are natural, to interpret God's dealings, which are supernatural. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises some men count slackness but is long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance i pick up on this on thursday ladies and gentlemen i'm enjoying this word glory be to god the unbroken promises of god when god says surely Woo. <laughs> when god says surely when God says, surely, I tell you the truth, you can, you can take that to the bank. Glory be to Jesus Christ. There is no surer way to live your life than to give your life to Jesus Christ. When you give your life to Jesus, you have the surety of eternity. If in this life only we have hope, then we are of all men most miserable. What shall it profit a man that he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? If you ever gain everything here on earth and lose eternity, you gained nothing. The greatest promise that was given to us was the promise of the coming of Christ. And the next promise was the promise of the return of Christ. So if you never will receive a car, a house, never get married, there is the promise of the return of Christ so that those who have believed in him should walk into eternity to live forever in the presence of the Father. 
People will not go to hell because they were sinners. They will go to hell because they rejected God's salvation from sin, Jesus Christ. Today, you can receive that great promise of salvation and eternal life. For eternal life is in his son. That's what the scripture says. God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might receive everlasting life. So if you're there and you want to receive this great promise that was manifested many years ago, I would like to gladly lead you. All you need to do is to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He came in the flesh. He lived on the earth. He died on the cross. He was buried in the tomb, but he rose up on the third day and he ascended to heaven. He seated at the right hand of the Father and he will soon be back to take away his saints. Say this after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of the living God. You are the Christ, the Most High. So today, I confess that you are my Savior my Lord and my God. Amen and amen. If you have made that confession, you're now a child of God, a child of the King. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son of love. You have moved from darkness to light. You have moved from death to life. You now have the life of God on the inside of you. That simple faith has brought salvation. But let me tell you the truth. That salvation is not cheap. But a simple faith has brought that salvation. So now you are blessed and not cast anymore because Christ has redeemed you already. Heaven rejoices and so do we. So a few things that I would like to urge you to do. Number one, please get in touch with us with the number on your screen, plus two five four seven two one five five six one five nine, by text, via WhatsApp, or even a phone call and let us know that you have given your life to Jesus Christ so that we may just receive you and be glad and give glory to God and thanks to him for saving you today. Number two, please tell your friends, your family, your fraternity, and everybody around you, just let them know you have given your life to Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid by those who will mock you and tell you, let's see how far you will go. Will you stand? No, 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 no. Because you do not stand by your own strength. It's not your own will and might and ability to remain saved. It is the grace of God. We are saved by grace through faith, not by works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. So he who has started a good work in you shall cause that work to be accomplished. Glory be to God. So do not even fear. What will they say? What if I don't make it? You will make it. You will make it. The just man will fall even seven times and I'm not giving permission, but God still upholds him. We have, we have stayed on course not because of our own strength or determination or will or because we are decisive. We have stayed on course by the grace of God. There are days we thought we would not stay saved there are times we felt we wanted to walk away. In fact, some of us even went back that the love, the grace, and the mercy of God drew us back to himself. So don't even worry about that. Shout about it and tell everybody you're now saved. The third thing I wanted to do is get yourself a Bible because that's how you will grow. Begin to study the word of God. Feed on it. The gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John will be of help to you. Those are the first four books in the New Testament. So please get yourself a copy of the Bible. Download, borrow, buy, whatever you need to do. But get yourself a copy of the Bible. Preferably start with the gospel of John. It might be simpler for you to understand and get uh, to just begin to glean from the life of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. The next thing is that it is important for you to join a congregation, be part of a family, a support group, be part of a church. Find a local congregation, find a pastor. The scripture says in Jeremiah 3.15 that I will give you pastors after my own heart. So please find a church and find a pastor where you will feed, be nourished, grown, developed, mentored, and God get you to the place where you become a true disciple of Jesus Christ, influencing the world. Remember, from now, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. It is God that gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints. So you need some people to equip you. Please join, find a place, make it your church, 
and be part of that fellowship and submit there and grow from there and learn and glean and just love and you may have challenges but just stay there and keep on growing to the glory of God you are free to join us at any of our New Birth Covenant Church branches as I talked about before so we've got several of them if you are in Mary you'll find one Nairobi City Center Rongai Kitengela which is the newest in the family you will find that in Kisumu you will find it in Yahuru you will find us in uh, Siokimau you will find Eldoret whichever place you will find Nakuru free area plug in connect to whichever one of the new birth covenant church branches that they are just check them out on facebook and you will find that and if you feel that you want to go somewhere else or even if you are too far away you want to go somewhere else i pray that you still go into a good place where you will be fed in the word and you'll be developed and you'll be grown and disciple in the name of jesus christ for those of you who don't even know where to go you don't even know what a good church would mean and you're in a different country county city continent you're in a certain village you're in certain place uh, even an estate just around the city you're in a community and you don't even know which one to go to and you need help please get in touch plus two five four seven two one five five six one five nine via whatsapp text message or even phone call and let us just help you you might find another place to go to and we would be very glad to help you but we want you to be part of a congregation in jesus mighty name now everybody else please celebrate with me those who have given their lives to jesus and as we do that let us now give unto the lord out of our money our offering your tithe your gift glory be to jesus christ remember up until sunday just a thousand five hundred each for this work your grace understanding prophetic dimensions now this is the greatest gift you could i, I would give you and you would give me it's my birthday week as i told you so i'm just giving out gifts glory be to god so get yourself a copy of this and don't just don't just think about yourself if you have the ability you can buy five and just send it to a few other people uh, i have had testimonies of people being transformed by books i'm telling you the truth i've had testimonies um i was told about a book i'll probably share it one of these days again lines and cake and there's this gentleman who is bound by so many things and i was told this gentleman has read this book like four times he's not even a pentecostal he's not even a you know, ordinary church believer but he has gone through it from cover to cover four times and he only received this book this year in the month of May because he really resonates with the things that are put in there and the struggles that he has had. So please, you never know how a book would be a blessing to somebody else. So please don't just buy for yourself and say, oh, I already have work your grace, so I don't need it. No, you probably have this opportunity to become a blessing to some people. So use this week and get yourself copies of this book and send them to as many people as you can. You never know which life you are going to save. Right now, please bring out your tithe and your offering. Your tithe is a 10% of your income and your increase. And your offering is your gift to the Lord. I want to appreciate each and every one of you who has been giving. You have been great. You have been good. You have been doing well. We can take it higher. Glory be to God. So sacrificially and faithfully, joyfully, and sometimes even while weeping, let's give and to the lord right now send into 655125 that's the pay bill indicate in the account that that is your tithe or your offering if it is your thanksgiving if it is your um commitment to anything please go ahead and indicate that you want to be a support to our media ministry go ahead do not limit yourself well don't limit yourself we are not allergic to many zeros we are not allergic at all uh, we are not allergic at all as long as the zeros come after the uh, the the digit we are not allergic at all we are only allergic to the zeros that come before but if it is after the digit no problem just the more the zeros the better glory be to god hallelujah amen and amen so go ahead and if you need to write a check and drop it in, please write it to Nibod Covenant Church. And you can drop it in at our church in Siokimau as well. Or send it right there with a the rider. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Nibod is one word. Your offerings, please go ahead and indicate as well in the account that that is your offering. For those who want to do direct and personal, plus 2547215561569 is, uh, is the number. Plus 2547215561569 is the number. So use that. If you're using Wild Remit and Wave, those of you who are abroad, 
Lord. I appreciate each and every one of you who have been such a blessing to us from Sweden, from the US, from Canada, from Qatar, from Dubai, South Africa, all of you who are watching from everywhere. And I'm just so glad that you're connected to us from wherever you're watching, sending your offering, sending your gift, sending your blessing. Glory be to God. I must say it from the UK as well, because I've been having just people tuning in and also being of support to us. And we love, appreciate you. Glory be to God. Father God, I pray for every tither right now. I pray for everyone who's giving their offering. May the grace of multiplication and increase rest upon them. Rebuke the devourer for their sake. I pray the priestly blessing right now in the name of Jesus. As they bring to you that which belongs to you, give to them that which you have promised to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Strengthen their hands. Open the doors of life. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing that they will have no room for in the name of Jesus Christ. So Father God, right now, even for the rest of the people, I bless their week, I bless their evening, I bless their morning, I bless their day in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command that sickness and disease leave their body in the name of Jesus. Worry and anxiety disappear right now. Tumors be decimated in the name of Jesus by the power that is in the word of the Lord. Right now, receive wholeness, receive wellness, receive peace, receive life, receive vitality, receive strength in Jesus' name of Nazareth. Glory be to God. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Please tune in tomorrow into the morning mist, 6 to 7 a.m. East African time. And let's have some time in the Holy Ghost as well. Remember on Thursday, we continue continue with this uh, on the 17th that is on Thursday let's continue with this teaching and let's just glean from God the God of unbroken promises and this is that month that we are talking about unbroken promises when God says surely and it must come to pass in your life tune in as well in every other uh, service that we have so remember to follow us at nbcc underscore kenya on twitter nbcc kenya on instagram the covenant channel on youtube subscribe even right now you will find so many other sermons that i've done this year uh, you'll find that on the covenant channel so please go right over there the covenant channel on facebook and then the various new but covenant church pages that are on facebook as well so that you get notifications and you need to set those notifications so that you get to know every time that we're coming live or we're coming on air to bring the word of god Praise be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. Watch over you, cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. As I always say, Shalom Irene, peace and prosperity. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing shall be broken in your life. Amen and amen. We've got this Caribbean beat and we want you to join us to praise the Lord. So put on your dancing shoes and we want to say to the Lord today, Glory, glory, hallelujah. God Almighty, you are faithful to the end. Say it again. God Almighty. You have all power and all wisdom. You have all riches. Reign in majesty, created all things, and you were the King of the Lord, eternal God, 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 eternal